welcome back to my channel, your source for all UK property investment and tax related matters. This video is for you if you're a seasoned investor looking to optimize your portfolio through strategic tax planning. Today, I'll bring to your attention more property tax strategies that can significantly enhance your tax position. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated with our latest insights. Let's get into some sophisticated tax saving tactics that could make a big difference to your bottom line. First, let's quickly recap the basics of property tax in the UK. 1. Stamp Duty Land Tax SDLT. Land Transaction Tax in Wales or Land and Buildings Transaction Tax in Scotland are all forms of SDLT in the UK in different jurisdictions through devolution. You need to be familiar with the tax in the jurisdiction you are buying property in. 2. Capital Gains Tax CGT. 3. Inheritance Tax 4. Income Tax on Rental Income 5. Annual Tax on Envelope Dwellings ATED. Remember, if you want more information on any of these planning opportunities after watching this video, leave a comment and let me know. Understanding the basics is crucial for investors before moving to more complex strategies. Now, why should you care about optimizing your property tax? Well, efficient tax planning can not only reduce your immediate financial burden, but also improve your investment's long-term profitability. Because simply put, tax is a cost, just like all other property costs. Let's explore some foundational concepts that set the stage for more advanced techniques. Let's tackle Stamp Duty Land Tax SDLT. While often considered a straightforward tax, there are several strategies to mitigate its impact. 1. Multiple Dwellings Relief MDR. MDR is applicable when purchasing more than one dwelling, where a transaction or a series of linked transactions include freehold or leasehold interests in more than one dwelling. The SDLT is calculated on the average value of the dwellings, multiplied by the number of dwellings subject to a minimum rate of 1%. If someone buys three flats for £600,000 in total, the SDLT is calculated on the average price, £200,000, which might result in lower SDLT than if calculated on the total price. The bad news is that multiple dwellings relief, MDR, will be abolished with effect from 1st of June 2024. Two. Mixed Use Properties Relief This relief applies when a property includes residential and non-residential elements. SDLT liability for mixed use properties is often lower than for purely residential properties. Purchasing a property with a shop with a flat above might qualify the entire property as mixed use, potentially resulting in a lower SDLT liability. 3. Transfer of property in a divorce or separation No SDLT is payable when property is transferred between partners as part of a divorce settlement or when dissolving a civil partnership. If a couple, couple divorces and one party transfer their share of the marital home to the other, no SDLT is due on this transfer. 4. Not-for-profit organizations and charities Relief Charities or trustees of a settlement can claim relief on SDLT when purchasing property for charitable purposes. If the property will be used for the charity's objectives, SDLT may not be charged. A charity purchasing a new building as a homeless shelter may be eligible for SDLT relief. 5. Acquiring property in an enterprise zone. Enterprise zones encourage economic growth. SDLT relief may be available when purchasing land or property in one of these zones, subject to spe specific conditions and ti timing. A business purchasing property within an enterprise zone might benefit from SDLT relief if the transaction qualifies under the specific rules of the zone. 6. Transfer of shares in property owning companies. Instead of directly purchasing properties, Buying shares in a company that owns property can significantly reduce SDLT liabilities. 7. 
Partnership Property Transfers Transferring property into a partnership can offer deferral or potential reduction in SDLT charges. Each of these reliefs has specific criteria that must be met and the application process can vary based on the details of the transaction and the property involved. Another effective strategy involves commercial property allowances. If you own commercial properties or are about to buy one, you may be entitled to various allowances like capital allowances, which can be claimed on items such as equipment, fixtures and fittings within the building. Here's how you can maximize these benefits. Identify qualifying items. Conduct a thorough survey of your property to identify all qualifying fixtures and features. Claim for integral features. Integral features like heating systems, security systems and lifts carry substantial allowances. Consider a professional valuation. Hiring a specialist to review capital allowance could uncover significant tax savings. Identify possible capital allowances you could claim on the purchase of a commercial property from a seller. This is a good opportunity and you need to address it early in the purchase stage. By leveraging capital allowances, you can dramatically decrease your taxable income, which can translate into more cash on hand for further investments. Optimizing property income, allowances and rental business. Property relief can be game changing for those with extensive rental portfolios. Maximize your property income allowance. Each tax year, you can earn a certain amount tax-free property income. Make sure you're not missing out on this allowance. Structure optimization. Holding properties in a corporate structure can lead to significant tax advantages, including lower corporation tax rates compared to the overall rates of income tax. The right structure will also allow you to protect each project you do, or more importantly, protect your portfolio of finished projects from any issues arising with new projects. However, these benefits must be weighed against potential implications such as the impact on inheritance and capital gains tax. You need to take a holistic approach so that you don't create a tax problem down the road due to some planning you did to save tax at some earlier point. As property tax laws continuously evolve, staying ahead means keeping an eye on future changes and preparing accordingly. Here are a few tips. Stay informed. Subscribe to newsletters, attend seminars and consult with tax professionals to stay regularly updated on the latest property tax regulations. Scenario planning. Regularly assess how potential tax changes could impact your portfolio and prepare multiple strategies to mitigate risks. By being proactive, you can adapt to changes efficiently and maintain your portfolio's profitability. I've covered several property tax strategies today, each offering the potential for substantial savings. Implementing these strategies can be complex, so consider consulting with a professional tax advisor to tailor these tactics to your specific circumstances. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.